The name's Bond. Jane Bond. Hey, my fellow nerds and nerdettes, this is the Comic Relief Crusader. Today, oh boy, <laughs> Bond, James Bond. Um, you know, next year is going to mark 60 years since the very first James Bond movie. And I have seen every James Bond movie with my dad, every, every single one. He loved James Bond. Uh, you know, super spy from Britain with all the fancy gadgets and, uh, you know, that Q gave him, <clears throat> you know, whether it was like, I don't know, little shooting missile pens or exploding watches and Aston Martins that, you know, had machine guns hidden in their taillights and, uh, you know, super ejector seats and rocket powered whatevers and stuff like that was awesome. I loved it as a kid, you know. Maybe the intros were a little bit too racy, if you know what I mean. But other than that, I, you know, it's it's one of the things that I really loved sharing with my dad. And, uh, you know, every, every one of them, Sean Connery and um, Roger Moore and George uh, Lazenby, like, you know, Timothy Dalton and Pierce Brosnan and, and you know, even the latest one, Daniel Craig, right? And seen every movie from Dr. No from back in 1962 to, obviously, the latest one, which is uh, uh, Spectre, which came out in uh, 2015. So, yeah, actually, wow. So about, about six years since the last one came out. And, um, so now the new one is coming out, No Time to Die, and it's been delayed a few times because of the virus of unspecified origin, and, um, yeah, it's, it's under a bit of controversy. It's under a lot of controversy, actually. Um, apparently, um, you know... In the past, we've had, I don't know, we've had a lot of female spy shows and, uh, and, and TV shows, movies, TV shows, um, like Atomic Blonde, I don't know what kind of title that is, but with Shirley Theron, and uh, we had, um, what was it? Shotgun Milkshake, the latest one that I believe is out on Netflix right now. Uh, we've had, God, what else? We've had La Femme Nikita. Uh, actually, two of them, believe it or not, that has uh, been on the screen on TV. And uh, we also had the one from over 10 years ago. We've had Alias. So, you know, we've also had the female side, our female version of James Bond as well. Well, unfortunately, that is not good enough for the woke crowd out there. No, you just have to take anything that's male-oriented and sprinkle your wokeness crap all over it because, you know, toxic masculinity and damn the patriarchy and all that kind of stuff. Well, we have our Woman of the Year, according to Bazaar, uh, Lashana Lynch. And she's going to be named the first black female 007. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because you just couldn't make up an original female character... And, um, you know, and have her be a spy. You just have to take and take James Bond on top of it because toxic masculin masculinity. But there you go. So, 
uh, as she prepares to star in the 25th Bond film, as it reads, the actress is on a mission to use her voice for good and represent her race and sex with pride. Oh boy. So the article goes on, um, you know, that this is the Bond's franchise 25th release, in which she stars as Naomi, a secret agent who inherits the 007 title while Bond himself is in exile. So, shame on you, Bond. Shame on you. You're not fit to be 007 anymore. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna take a strong whammon and we're gonna make her the next, the next Bond. The next Jane Bond. You might as well just call her Jane Bond, right? Um, she responds thoughtfully to each of my questions, said the interviewer, uh, getting right to the, to the heart of the matter, to tell me what she really thinks. While I'm not being hijacked or muted, I'm like, why would you be, right? Uh, she says, we have the opportunity to talk. I'd rather, uh, I'd always rather speak to you as though it could be the last time we get to say these things. Oh my God. Because, you know, are people trying to suppress you? Are there super villains out there that are trying to prevent you from speaking? Well, let's go on. So, the other quote further goes on. Initially, the Bond opportunity came about. Lynch had reservations about joining another franchise. See, she was she was in Captain Marvel, as you as you might remember this actress. So, but uh, yeah, having reservations about joining another franchise, about getting lost behind the man, right? Oh, oh, because it's 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 men pushing you behind the patriarchy, the bad patriarchy, uh, as she puts it. But on speaking with the producer Barbara Piccoli. Uh, she's actually the daughter of the man that originally put out James Bond um, way back when. So she's actually kind of inherited the title, the James Bond franchise title, I suppose you could say. Uh, Barbara Bacoli and the director, Kerry Joji Fukunaga, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, she understood that their intentions ran alongside hers. Oh, really? Did they really? Before filming began, she sat down with Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Now, if any of you know Phoebe Waller-Bridge, well, then I don't need to say anything more, but, oh boy, she she is on the side of woke as well. And, you know, female empowerment and down with the patriarchy and wow, wow, wow. Everything that, her, that she writes in a script is, you know, essentially all about that. Who was there to infuse the script? Oh, there you go with a fresh female perspective. Oh boy. I can just imagine. Lynch wanted to ensure Naomi was suitably drawn, believable, perhaps even a little awkward. She set out to portray the truth of being a black woman. So, what, there are lies of being a black woman out there? Like, come on. Um, someone she might know, someone in her family, avoiding the two-dimensional view that can easily be conveyed on screen or written in scripts. Okay. A character that is too slick, a cast-iron figure, that's completely against what I stand for, says Lynch. I don't want to waste an opportunity when it came to what Naomi might represent. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I searched for at least one moment in the script where black audience members would nod their heads, tooting at the reality, but glad to see their real life represented. Oh, so it's about black representation, is it? It's, it, it couldn't possibly be about, you know, I don't know, just being in the film, in an action film, stopping some super bad guy plot or something like that. It has to be about, you know, whether you're black or white and your representation. Like, 
Come on. This is this is what ruins a movie, essentially, right? You don't need to add, you know, I need to be represented because A, I'm a woman, and B, because of my race. For Pete's sake, you're a human being, okay? Doesn't matter if you're male or female, you know, it's just a story. And every project I am part of, no matter the budget or genre, the black experience that I'm presenting needs to be 100% authentic. Let me, look, I'm not against white people or black people. Uh, you know, we're all human beings. Your experience is no different or no more special than anybody else's experience in life. You know, everybody lives life differently. Everybody has experiences. You know, you don't have to make it sound like people are missing out just because, you know, just because they're white or black or whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, anyway, the article goes on. Uh, I think we're really beginning to eradicate the shiny, well-established hierarchy of celebrity. Oh, really? Okay. Eradicating. Great. Uh, some cons, uh, some companies are constantly speaking out and working to educate themselves to do what is right. Well, okay. Well, who says that you know what is right? Who who made you the Patreon of what is right? Right? But then you have those others, and her voice immediately changes. The ones using it as an opportunity we see who they are it's very clear oh really okay wow so what you're being the overlord of you know good and evil or something like that so what if somebody's views don't exactly match up with yours what are you gonna do you're gonna cancel them you're gonna i don't know scream some sort of injustice like come on give me a break Seriously, Lynch has no time for so-called allies who are inconsistent in their support. It infuriates me, she said, of certain brands that jumped on the bandwagon. Now suddenly you found archives of black films to release on your platform. Now you're going to use black models in your inserts, uh, sorry, in your adverts. Suddenly everyone's decided we exist. Where was this before? Well, I'd tell you where it was before. It was always there. So, black models and uh, black actors and whatnot, they've been around for decades. You remember Grace Jones? She was in James Bond. She was extremely popular. And she was a model on top of that. So, you know... We've, we've had them around for decades. Don't fool yourself. Too deep. Oh, does it really? Says Lynch. By contrast, she points out, black people have to make it their daily responsibility to understand other racial experiences in order to navigate the world. No, you really don't. You just have to not be an a-hole. It's as simple as that. So, to finish off, she, she sees her role in No Time to Die as a step in the right direction. Oh, really? Okay, because, you know, you couldn't have possibly had uh, a lot of other aforementioned shows and movies that, uh, you know, that you could have possibly made your own or something like that. Um, a way of confronting stereotypes around race and gender that have persisted for far too long. Yeah, shame on you men that that present yourself as strong and capable and being able to get the job done. How dare you? You know? 
wicked, wicked people. I feel very grateful that I get to challenge those narratives. Uh, She says, we're moving away from toxic masculinity. Mm. Right, because because men going out and doing their job on a daily basis, whether you're in the military or or a spy, like James, stopping uh, evil plots by evil supervillains, that's toxic. That's bad. Shouldn't do that. Um, so we're moving away from toxic masculinity and that's what's happening because women are being open, demanding and vocal and calling out misbehavior as soon as we see it. So there you go, men. If you're being toxic, well then, women are going to open up and they're going to slap you on the pee-pee and they're going to tell you what's wrong with you. So, so there we go. Bye-bye, James, and hello, Jane. So, once again, the diversity police have uh, given James a ticket. Uh, Ian Fleming is probably rolling over in his grave right now. And, um, yeah, screw screw the white men that have uh, come before for the last 60 years and given us a plethora of entertainment of fantastic spy movies over the years of uh, with fantastic gadgets and plots and and everything else we've uh, we've we've been very bad watching it and uh, apparently they've been you know very bad at their job and incapable of doing it and uh, you know foiling disastrous evil plots are uh, are toxic so gonna say it's uh, it's a good time to probably after this uh, no time to die which should be releasing uh, sometime actually this fall it's probably a good time to maybe quit so I don't know seeing how uh, MGM has been bought by uh, Jeff Bezos maybe it might be time to cancel that Amazon Prime subscription so anyway This is the Comic Relief Crusader. Over and out.